Sometimes when I uh, preach out in California, I'll go run on the beach and there are deserted parts of the beach and, and the sea moss and seaweed will come up on the, on the beach and they, they, they're very, it's uh, horrible when you're running along and you forget and you don't look down and there's swarms of flies, uh, swarms, uh, they, they just engulf you. And I think about that, how horrible that would be for day after day after day, flies everywhere. And, and all of the Egyptians will have it in their homes, in their families, on their children, on their babies, on their young toddlers, flies on everything. But then he said, but in that day, I will sever and draw a line in the sand and my people will dwell in Goshen and there will be no flies there. In other words, in Egypt, and you got to understand the Israelites were in Egypt. And there was the Egyptians' neighborhoods, and they were beautiful homes and beautiful, but they ran right up on Goshen, which was where the slum area was, where the Jews, the Israelites had to live. They were slaves, and their homes looked like it, and they were full of flies in Egypt. But God said, I'm going to draw a line, and there will be no more flies in Goshen. My people will be sitting out in the backyard, in the shade of a tree, enjoying the weather, sipping lemonade, kick back, watching you Egyptians being tormented, trying to shoo the flies away, but you can't. They're everywhere and will be right next to you, but there will be a no-fly zone that God will decree that those flies that, 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 that love death and dying and deterioration and going down and rotting and, and putrefaction, they will not come into that land called Goshen, even though you'll watch them and see them on the Egyptians, I sovereignly am going to draw a line of separation. I believe that we're in a time now, after coming out of the pandemic, where God is drawing some lines in the sand. This is important. The first three plagues that Moses released, the Israelites went through the same horror and plague and suffering that the Egyptians went through. God did not exempt his people from the first three plagues. The first three plagues was he turned the water to blood. The second one is the frogs. Frogs were everywhere. Frogs were in the bed. They were on the table. They were everywhere. They were, and you could not move all night long. They were on you. We can't even imagine this, this torment. And then if that wasn't bad enough, he released the third plague, which was lice. And the lice was there as swarms and swarms of it on the people. And it wasn't just on the Egyptians. These tormenting plagues and suffering came to the Israelites, God's people. Why would God allow his people to suffer? Why does God let things happen to us that happens to everybody else? Just because you have faith and just because you pray and just because you believe God does not mean that you will not find yourself in a faith fog where you don't understand and you're saying, God, I understand why that person's going through that, but I don't understand why good people suffer and good people go through tragedies and good people have heartbreaks and good people have things go bad and go south in their life. I don't understand that. But here is a great lesson in this. God allowed the Israelites to suffer just like the Egyptians, and here's the reason why. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 38, the Bible said that when they came out of Egypt, they came out a mixed multitude. It wasn't just, please understand what that means. You read right over that and you don't see it. But when the plague started breaking out, the first three, those Egyptians watched those Israelites and noticed how 
suffering affected them. It did not turn them off to God. It turned them more on to God. It made them worship more. It made them praise more. It made them believe even greater. And while they were suffering, they were suffering the same hardships, but their gods didn't give them the peace that they had. Their gods didn't give them the assurance that they had. Their gods did not comfort them like their God comforted them. And there was something about suffering that caused a line to be drawn. And God allows us to suffer just like other people to suffer to show the contrast between how Egyptians or unbelievers in this case, how they suffer and the contrast between when they go through hard times and we go through hard times how Egyptians suffer, and how Israelites suffer. I want to ask you a question. Has how you suffered caused an Egyptian to want to convert? Because when it said they were a mixed multitude, it meant that some of the Egyptians, when they saw the Israelites suffering and how they still maintained their faith and their joy and their confidence in their God, they said, I'm leaving the gods of Egypt and I'm joining with their God and with that people. And the question that we need to ask ourselves when we go through suffering is, am I suffering in such a way that my suffering turns people to God? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.